Uh, good morning, everyone. So let me start my presentation. Yeah, so I try to target a problem is uh, how we can calculate the value of friends. And uh, so uh, I'm from the IBM TJ Watson Research Center, and uh, we have project on the social informatics and the collective intelligence. So we know that in a company or a big organization or like a US government, we always face a problem. Well, yeah, so right now I'm in a customer's place and a critical question is being asked by the customer. I know that someone in, like in IBM, we have 400,000 worldwide employees. Someone must know the answer. But, and uh, if we know the answer, it may be just one phone call away, we can call the right person and get the answers, and then maybe we can sign the contract immediately. So this is a, a huge problem for the global organizations. And uh, how we can find out the expertise, the right person, and uh, to answer the question. So it's a very challenging problem. So basically, what people, how people find information, most of them are still based on the personal network. So no matter there are how many tools you have, all the databases, all the way to point the tools, the most reliable or way to get the answers most of the time is still like calling the personal network. So right now the problem comes, how we can find out the expertise and how we can find out our friends or our friends' friends who have the expertise to help us to answer the question. So right now it comes to an issue. Okay, so from our view, how we can unlock the power of our existing networks and also automatically how we can do that without costing too much time? Because like in uh, uh, business cases, it's very hard to like, extract more time from the uh, practitioners or consultants. They're already occupied. So if you want them to spend a lot of time to do the blogging, it's really difficult. So it comes to a problem. OK, so how and where does the knowledge reside? So there's a research saying, like 25% of the IT employees, their time they spend on the emailing. And I believe many of you maybe spend more time when you are working the work on the emailing. So actually, email has the most knowledge, has the most information about you there. And uh, we know there are a lot of also other information, you know, like uh, instant messages, calendars, or all the databases, wikis, blog, micro blogins. These are all the knowledge is there. And how can we unlock that? So in IBM, we have been working on a, a project and a, a, a prototype for three years to unlock the power of business networks and uh, protect privacy. So basically, we, uh, we collect this kind of live data from more than 10,000 uh, distributed social sensors in 76 countries. And uh, it collects like uh, 20 million of the emails, instant messages from volunteers and also 1 million of web 2.0 data, trying to use a social network analysis and the visualization to find out the expertise and the, what the real social network between people. Okay. So when we talk about the uh, email mining, it's the biggest challenge always people ask, OK, so how about the privacy? How we can solve privacy? And uh, fortunately, IBM, we probably has a uh, the most lawyers for the, for the big companies. <laughs> OK, so we have lawyers all over the world. So we, we can ask them. And uh, so we can design a system, and then we pass our global privacy reviews and uh, to ask our lawyers. And also the Europe part. Europe has a more uh, legislation on the privacy. So we need to pass then a the review and the labor union review, one country by one country, to that then, OK, yes, this is a system. So we can Find how we can find the balance between the web 2.0, between the social computing and the privacy. So how we can use that? So there comes some of the, the tools we can provide. So for example, like, uh, you can see like, uh, for, for every, every person, we are able to find out their dynamic personal social network and also their social proximity to anyone inside the 400,000 IBMers. And you can also see, like, uh, for example, each of my colleagues, what is his, his social value to me? So this is actually very interesting. Whenever we have the whole network structure, we are able to see like uh, Chris DeForges, and uh, he can help me to connect to uh, how many people in uh, sales, how many people in software, 
developments. So you kind of uh, understand that your friends value to you. And also, you can like, uh, type in any kind of keyword to find out the top expertise, maybe inside the whole company, or maybe inside a group, or maybe inside your three degrees away. So you can get the top rank or, or experts. And uh, you can also get the paths to this person, and also your multiple passes, your social passes to that person. So you can bypass the formal hierarchies, but you have the informal, hier informal network. You know how to reach this person and who are the trusted friends between you. Okay? And uh, you can also try to see the network analysis from the global view. You can find out, OK, so right now if I want to find out the healthcare experts inside the uh, IBM, so who are the experts and how they are connected? And who are like uh, independent experts? Who are the, the bridges? Who are the lead? And where are they in the world? And uh, how they're connected? So you can, sh you can get that. <laughs> so it's a very interesting tool. And it has been used inside IBM for uh, our production since about a year ago. And actually, the use of that is uh, quite impressive. So because people don't need to spend time on that, so people are allowed to uh, use this kind of tool to help solving their problem. <laughs> and, uh, Based on this kind of the real mining of the social network and also the financial performance we collect on uh, individuals, we are able to link the social network with their performance, how much they can earn for the, for the IBM and uh, based on their network property. So these are some of the researches we did with the MIT professors and the students. We analyzed IBM's data. So we find out that in average, a direct contact in your personal network is equal to $948 annual revenues. So the more friends you have actually can help you earn more money. Okay. But it doesn't mean you can just friend in on the Facebook forever. So because we try to find out the real social network, it is constrained by the time you really have and by the constraint of the real connections you have. So therefore, it's not unlimited. So don't be happy if you try to friend 1,000 people, 2,000 people, it doesn't really help. Okay, and uh, which one is better for a diverse network or cohesive network? So for the network structure, we find out that so more diverse your network is, the more revenue we will generate. So if you have a cohesive network uh, that everybody is very familiar with everybody, actually it's not they they successful. More diverse you have actually can help you more successful. So actually we didn't know the answer before we do the study. Okay, because two kinds of situations are all possible to make you successful. And also, for example, like uh, your linkage to your managers, does it really matter? Okay, so we found out that if you want to have a linkage with your, man with your managers, you need to have a very strong tie, very strong link with your manager. It can help you to earn 500 more in, um, in your monthly revenues. Okay, and uh, do not just have a weak, very casual link to manager, actually, it doesn't help you. And we also find out that in a project team competition, at the very beginning, if you have more managers, it will help you earn more. But after a while, it will drop. So if you have many managers in the project team, actually, it may not help that much. Okay. So actually, we find out this is actually really risky because we are telling my boss, well, we cannot have too, much, too many managers. So <laughs> basically, our next step. Um, so one thing is that so U.S. government is uh, collaborating with about 100 professors and researchers in 30 academic and uh, in industrial organizations. <laughs> we are establishing four new network science research centers to try to understand the fundamental science of a network. Okay, so include communication, information, and the social cognitive networks. So uh, we are working mainly with the RPI and the uh, Northeastern to lead uh, this uh, uh, social and the cognitive network academic research science center. So uh, we try to understand the, what the real uh, trust, how do people trust with each other, or like uh, how the dynamic networks e evolve, or whether this kind of the computational way to find out people's relationship, or to understand the people, how they can change the way social science think about the problem. So we are imagining that network is becoming a science. You can have a lot of observations and then try to find and try to solve the problems. So one exciting thing is that we are going to make a small blue 
open the, the, to the internet, and uh, we have a small blue water version internet in about early 2010. And then here is our website. Okay. And uh, thank you for a lot of our colleagues and friends for to help to make this happen. Okay. Thank you.